What's up, you wonderful people of YouTube? My name is Paul. I used to teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as a black belt, took a long time off, and now I'm back being a student. And so the goal is for me to blog about, write about, share these videos with you on my journey of being a student again and getting back into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in my early 40s. And so the hardest thing that I found out is that <laughs> when you take a long time off, you're definitely not the same person as you were before athletically or physically. And so you need to start from the beginning and kind of set really realistic expectations. Like I didn't show up to the gym being like, I'm going to tap everybody. Instead, I'm going to get tapped by everybody and which is perfectly fine. And I'm a big believer in doing very structured approaches to your training because we all have limited amount of time. So defining ahead of time the things that you're going to work in class to me, it's very important. So in today's video, I just wanted to share what am I focusing on the first and second week of my training. And again, you could kind of use this as a like an approach to see if you want to do something similar to this, but I'm not trying to tell you this is what you have to do. Again, this is from the standpoint, this is what I'm doing. If you have a strategy that has worked for you, let me know. But the idea for me, especially for the first week and second week, is definitely improve my cardio. My cardio sucks. Like I get tired just by sitting down. And so working on improving my cardio is really, really important. I also wanted to make sure when I come to class, not to randomly do things, but to follow a game plan that I have that I'll share with you. And the basic idea for me is to focus starting from our feet. Why? because going for grappling will work my cardio for sure. And so that's a plus for me. But the general idea of why I'm starting on my feet, and I'll show my game plan in a second, but the idea is when I start my feet, the person either comfortable fighting from the feet, so you will be working takedowns, or your partner will be like, what the hell? I don't wanna do takedowns with this dude. Screw this dude, this dude's too heavy. So they'll sit down and pull guard. And so the two places that I wanna spend majority of my time on is either doing takedowns or or if my partner sits uh, down, then I could practice guard passing. And either or, I'm very I'm focused on doing two specific things in my training, either takedowns or passing guard. The reason why I find this is important is because if you can't take your opponent down or pass, like you can't really finish. Of course, there's things you could do in between, but in general, in my mindset, it's like, no, if I can't get to the top of my partner, there's no point of me even trying to go for submissions. So submissions are secondary. Position is important, getting the takedown or getting the guard pass. And if I ever find myself in the bottom, now oh, my cat's moving the mouse. If I ever find myself on the bottom, like playing guard, don't play guard, don't focus too much on reversing your opponent. You can, but again, my focus is takedowns and guard passing so just do a technical stand up and get to your feet as quickly as possible so here's my game plan that i'm working on and this is a little kind of chart that i made for myself to be like hey if you find yourself here like i'm dumb so like i need directions so the basic idea i start from standing when standing up your opponent could literally do two things well, three things. They could run away. That never happened. But, you know, from standing, they're either going to do uh, takedowns with you and take you down and smash you or they're going to sit down. So from that perspective, when I start on my feet, I start to dictate the match because literally there's two things they could do. They could either sit down and play guard or they're going to play takedowns with me, which is fine because it fits into what I'm working on. So if they remain standing, the takedowns I'm working on is the body lock where I'm trying to call that my home base. I try to get two hands grip around the waist. And from there, I'm focusing either uh, crunching them to take him down. If the crunch doesn't work, I look to grab have a single leg first just to move them around. Maybe I'll take them down. The cool thing about the single leg, if you grab it and you start pulling on their leg, they're going to give you counter resistance, which switching to a double leg uh, literally is to me a no brainer. And then if they start to defend the double leg, you could switch back to single leg and then you could go back to body lock and you could literally in the perfect world do that indefinitely in until you take your opponent down. Now, if I do get the takedown, you might end up in their guard which basically comes to passing, right? So either if I take him down and I end up in guard, I will start passing, or if they're um, standing and they sit down, I start passing. I really wanna focus on Toriando pass 
Um, and sometimes people will sit up, you know, they'll play that butterfly guard or whatever. They're sitting up. And so like Toriando pass, not like it's better to do if they're flat on their back. So what I do is I threaten the guillotine choke all the time, 100% every time. Uh, threaten the guillotine choke, make him kind of lean back, or I grab their ankles and lift them up to flatten their back. And then from there, I start playing Toriando Pass because it's, again, athletic. My goal is to improve my cardio, so why not do athletic type of moves where you faint and move? And what I'm trying to do, uh, Gordon Ryan has this idea of camping past the J point. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out his video. But basically, the idea is past the partner's hips and find a good home base for you to camp on. And so what I'm trying to do is once I pass the legs, establish a position where I could hold the partner for, you know, good three, four, five seconds, maybe 10 seconds before continuing the pass and securing the position. Because the idea what I want to do is to exhaust my partner and work him really like hard. And the only two submissions I'm allowing myself to do from passing someone's guard, if they're sitting in butterfly guard, like I'm, oh, because I'm standing, right? I'm never on my knees. I'm always looking for the guillotine choke only, right? And if I force them on their back and their feet are exposed, I'm either doing Toriando or a very basic entry to leg lock. And again, the point here is not for me to finish the leg lock, is to secure the entry and maintain the position. If I get a tap, I get a tap, but who knows? And if I do pass the guard, right? I'm looking, whatever, if I'm transitioning through side mount, it doesn't matter. The goal is to get to mount position. And again, I'm really forcing myself to do these moves for next two weeks at least. Maybe I'll definitely do this game plan way longer. Maybe switch some of the takedowns I'm doing. But the general idea, when I get mount, I'm always bugging the neck. I want people to react with their arms. I'm either going to go for Americana if that doesn't work and then forces the hand across, that allows me to either secure the arm for the back take. It allows me to attack an arm bar or if their arm goes way too far and they expose the side here, I could go for the head and arm choke, which I've been working on. So literally from mount, I'm bugging the, the living daylights out of the neck, just really grinding my person the nicest way possible just so I could get them to move their hands and go for Americana, arm bar, head and arm, or back take. And obviously when I get to the back, I'm looking to finish with Mataleo or rear naked choke. And so the idea here is that I have a game plan for next two weeks, so I'm never showing up to class randomly wondering, like, what are you going to do, Paul? What the hell are you doing? And so the concept here, the one big takeaway is if you have limited amount of time that you're training, for instance, I'm training uh, twice a week Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and then once a week I do an MMA class and a Muay Thai class just to improve my cardio. If you have limited time training, you need to know how you're spending your time. And so if you go to gym without a basic game plan or of idea, I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you all think and give me some good tips on training and what you like to do so I could also keep getting better. And if you like this video, thumbs it up, whatever. If you don't like it, I get it too. But I'm just going to journal about my progression of getting back into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'll do some technical videos, not from the standpoint of like, I'm a, like going to teach you a move. It's like, this is what I'm doing. This is the issues I'm having. So all my videos are going to be from the standpoint, I'm just some random dude who, I guess I'm still a black belt, but I haven't trained in a while, who's trying to get back into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Here's what I'm learning. Here's what I'm finding. And here's what I'm trying to do to continue improving. So if you liked it, let me know. If you didn't, you could be like, hey, screw you, whatever. I don't care. But with that being said, happy training. I'll see you all later in the next video. Thank you so much.